This video is proudly sponsored by New Type. Tools, accessories, model kits, these guys have it. Hop over to NewTypesHQ.com and use promo code UTAKABUTA for 10% off on your next purchase. Hey, what's going on my dudes and dudettes and welcome back to another exciting build from the good folks from Bendai Japan. So why don't we get started with the figure res standard Super Saiyan Son Goku from the popular anime series Dragon Ball Z. And without further ado, let's get to it. Hello and season greetings to you all and welcome back to another unique build from the good folks from Bendai. And if this is your first time to this YouTube channel, welcome! So I know there's a handful of you dudes and dudes asking yourself, Otaka Builder, why are you building a Dragon Ball model kit? Don't you really specialize in just mechs alone? That's not necessarily true. I built the Saiyan Space Pod a little bit a couple months ago and that was great. But I got in touch with one of my old friends that I have literally have not talked to for almost five and a half years. And what really brought up the memories was all those good times we would bring in our old friends and our colleagues from work and we would have our own little LAN party playing everything from the original Dragon Ball games up to the PlayStation, PlayStation 2 and up to the Xbox 360. But the game that we played the most religiously every Saturday was Dragon Ball Budokai 3 and the robust fighting system plus on top of it with the great cell shaded art style was really really great and just we just had fun eating nothing but pizza, drinking nothing but sodas, really really hyping one another off, trash talking one another when we played each other. It was just a great time. And then a couple months ago, uh, the pandemic happened. And I have not talked to this guy for literally months upon months until recently he was like, hey, I'm gonna be picking up Dragon Ball Z Fighters for the PlayStation 4 and want to play a couple of games with you. And after sparring with him a couple of times, I felt to myself, you know what? I think it's about time to really tackle a Dragon Ball model kit fully with the full customization specs. And that, my dudes and dudes, we're going to be tackling the Dragon Ball Z Super Saiyan Son Goku. Now, to give you guys some context why I haven't tackled a Dragon Ball Z kit sooner, it's because they didn't look good. They really didn't do their homework to make these guys look like how they look in the anime. And I was really disappointed with that with Bendai. And plus, at the same time, I didn't really want to do all that extra work painting in the eyes and painting in the mouth to make it look how it would see in the anime. But since the films have done incredibly well in Japan plus worldwide and Dragon Ball has had this massive resurgence of popularity, Bendai has absolutely stepped up their game and they have delivered. As for the first side of the boxer, you get a nice background story of how Goku became the legendary Super Saiyan, which I will read a little bit. Uh, the Super Saiyan Son Goku saved the world by defeating Demon King Piccolo at the Tenkaichi. You know what? If you want to read it, it's right here for you guys. You can enjoy it. This is a lot to read here for my personal taste. Um, also on the very bottom gives you a nice representation of other figure kits that you can purchase from Bendai, which I have seen in public. They look absolutely great. So. Other than that, let's take a look what's inside the box. As always, you're happily agree with the instruction manual with Son Goku, while at the same time giving you a nice broad understanding on what runners you're going to be expecting for this model kit. Now, I have to give this manual a lot of love and credit. It is not too hard to really follow. It's not too difficult for someone that is new to building their very first model kit. It is very well thought out for both someone that is a fan, not a fan, someone that is relatively new to building, someone that is experienced to building model kits. There's a lot here that is familiar at the same time, a lot easy to follow, and I love that attention. So the first part of the page gives you a good rundown of how you're going to be constructing the hair, which I have to admit, it is very cool that they actually have it in a modular setting. So it's not one giant mold. That's great. So you can construct it in different stages. While the final page in the back gives you a whole rundown of how to construct Goku when he's fully assembled. While at the same time giving you a glimpse of what you'd expect for effect parts and an attachment to add to your action base if you have one lying around, which is great. Now the effects parts on here, what they really show are, they're okay. But I felt they could have pushed it a little bit more harder with the look of it, but it's still great for someone who just wants to have a standard Goku figure on their action base. As for the second and last page in the back, gives you a complete rundown on what you can put this model kit in dynamic poses, both in the air, both on the ground, both on an action stand, two interchangeable face plates, and at the same time, a whole slew of customizable colors if you want to do some custom painting, which is very welcoming when it comes to building a Gundam model kit or any other model kit that is Dragon Ball related. So before I get started doing any kind of customization, I need to evaluate which area I need to tackle first. So first and foremost, I'm gonna leave the hair second to last. That's like the best part I wanna work on. But what we really needs a lot of love and attention is the arms, legs, and the skin texture. Now Goku's skin texture is relatively like a pale, 
um, flesh tone, which is pretty accurate when he becomes a Super Saiyan. But I want to get a little bit more of a, of a tan while at the same time retain some of that nice uh, glow yellow when he's in full Super Saiyan to make it look really cool. But what's really important about this build is I need to assemble the arms first hand before I paint them. Painting them individually is just gonna make a lot of unnecessary color inconsistencies when I do a, a nice soft blend. The city lights, you're falling in love. Still aware, you know it is true. That you are lost and this is a clue. Love is forever, love is forever. Do believe you gotta let go. Light is a feather, light is Right, now that these pieces are done and set and dry, it's now time to apply a wash finish. So when I'm going to do this, I'm going to be hitting up with two different types of colors. First is going to be lemon yellow and then followed by a flat red. But to make this effect work right, I'm going to be using just a little amount of yellow inside my uh, epoxy cup and then dilute that sucker with some paint thinner. Just enough paint thinner where it makes the yellow nice and flat while at the same time not making it too overpowering. If you do this correctly, it's gonna make the effect really great. And then once you apply it onto the surface, you're gonna be using a sponge to dab some of it off to create some nice skin texture effects.
Well, all right, these are looking pretty good. So uh, I was very happy with the results, how the face came out. I was a little, really scared that they might be a little bit more uh, darker or brighter, but I wanted to keep the two separate, like keep the main face a nice soft yellow red while adding the angry face a little bit more of a reddish to make all the blood vessels are getting stuck in the head. Now, one thing I love about this model kit is the fact that the runners are separate for the eyes and you don't have to do any kind of custom painting, but the mouth, it's, uh, it's like a little too much like cell from Team Four Star. So we need to do some custom painting around the teeth and the tongue. So I'm hitting that up with a nice fine tip brush to really make those areas pop out. Now, another runner that seemed kind of out of place was the sole of the shoe and the, the shoe lace. Now, on the instruction manual, it kind of glosses over the fact that it's there, but when you look at it very closely, the shoe laces and the sole of the shoe is like a nice soft brown. So if you have a soft brown lying around, I would really recommend you implement this particular effect on it correctly. But if you're okay with the soft orange, there's nothing wrong with that. But for me, it kind of distracts me to a point where I can't work with it. Now, when it comes to the stripings for the shoes, you can actually use these sticker decals, which for me, I am not gonna be using that. I'm gonna be applying a flat red on top that do some fine little detail. Now for the hair, once again, this is where things are gonna get kind of fun. Since they are already like a translucent yellow I can actually add some really cool effects by popping a couple of LEDs now my original intention was to put like maybe one or four but this sucker is going to require close to seven to eight LEDs so hopefully it comes out the way how I imagine Now we have finally reached the one part that I've been super excited to get started on and that is the hair. Now I gotta give Bandai credit where credit's due. They have at least made like attempts to make the hair look like it's glowing like in the TV show. But when you do some custom painting, you can actually make it very accurate like how you would see on the instruction manual. It's a little bit more of like a soft pale yellow, but at the same time you still get some nice definition detail in there when you do some custom painting.
All right, now I can finally do the part that I absolutely love, and that is pre-shading. Now, when it comes to pre-shading, this is where it gets kind of complicated, but I'll try my best to explain. What I'm basically doing is trying to emphasize areas that already have some kind of 3D mold, but actually at the same time, make them pop out. Instead of using a flat black or a sea blue, I'm gonna be actually using a dark burgundy brown to complement the orange when it's fully set and dry. So now we have reached the part where I really would put my custom flair on making these effect parts really effective. 
play on words there. But uh, unfortunately, I wasn't able to be successful with that because I ran out of LED lights by the time I made this video. So I only had one mega LED light left to really make the Kamehameha ball really pop out when it's fully custom painted. But as for the remaining orb itself, with the energy being projected out, I'm just gonna do a nice custom airbrush paint job to make it look like it's actually like glowing, like how you would see in the anime. Okay, this is a lot more complicated than I thought. So for the first part of the bangs of the hair, I can't put just one mega LED light to make it really illuminate the way I want it. So what really makes more sense is putting in two chip LED lights in the front parts and the bangs. And then for the main compartment and back of the hair, I'm gonna be redirecting one mega LED light pointing directly towards it. Alright, now that I got the first hard part done, now it's kind of the second hard part is illuminate this whole entire cavity. So instead of putting in one LED light in there shooting upward, I'm going to actually have that one mega LED light sitting at an angle so that way it illuminates the whole entire cavity. If it's done correctly, I can make this work right, but just to play it safe, I'm going to sneak in one more mega LED light that's pointing back at the hair so that way it illuminates the back part of the strands the way how you would see in the anime. Alright my dudes and dudettes, as this video is wrapping up, I want to share with you guys my thoughts and impressions about this market. So I'm going to be talking about the bads and then I'll be working my way up to the good. So first the bads. So the moment I announced that I was going to be doing a Dragon Ball model kit, I got hit up on Instagram and also my YouTube community feed that I need to be very wary of certain areas that are so compact to one another, it's going to cause tons of paint scraping. And my dudes and dudettes, they were not wrong. It, it definitely happened many times around the groin and then the shoulder blade. There was a lot of paint scraping and chipping there. Not as much as on the head, not as much on the feet or the ankles. They're quite safe. But areas like in back of the leg where there's a lot of compact runners against one another, you're going to get tons of paint scraping. And, you know, a, a nice touch of a paint would actually get the issue, like, nullified. But it's definitely going to be kind of annoying, especially for individuals that like to do stop motion or like to do unique dynamic poses to make these kits look really cool, doing, like, something like photography 
um, diorama pieces. It's it's definitely gonna grab your attention when you start moving things around. So just be mindful of that. And thank you to the YouTube community tab for reminding me about that. That was very helpful. And last and finally, probably the one area that kind of bugs me, but at the same time isn't a big problem is the effect parts. Now, normally some manufacturers will make effect parts and just do little work with it. Just put it in one giant little mold, make it transparent, and then have at it, let it go. Bandai actually took the time and energy to actually mold and sculpt the Kamehameha wave in a way where it looks really stylized, very unique looking. Yes, it, it does require assembly, but at the same time, it still looks beautiful, and I give them lots of love and credit. My only downside with that is just I wish the effect part was slightly more bigger, a little bit more dynamic looking, but I'm pretty sure that would cut into, like, you know, cost of making something more... Um, unaccessible at the same time unnecessary so that's just a small little gripe but would i recommend this kit for someone that is new someone that is relatively being introduced into building model kits or someone that is just a fan of dragon ball z without a doubt hell yeah it is it was fun man i had so much fun building that kit and i truly hope you guys give me the opportunity to do another one hopefully this video does well to garnish that um, uh, incentiveness to do more Dragon Ball model kits down the road, but without a doubt, pick up this kit, guys. It's definitely worth the purchase. I had a blast, and I most certainly believe that you will too. And with that being said, thank you, dudes and does, for watching this video. Thank you so much for love and and the likes and share on YouTube, on Instagram, and Facebook. Big thank you to the Patreons, and stay tuned next week or the next two couple of weeks because we are boiling down to the last kit of 2020. But until then, I'll catch you, dudes and dudes, on the next video.